In today's video, I will be showing you how to install Kali Linux on VirtualBox. If you are into ethical hacking, penetration testing or cyber security, Kali Linux is an essential operating system. And the best part, you don't need to replace your current OS. You can simply install it inside VirtualBox and run it alongside Windows or Mac OS. Before we get started, make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future tech tutorials. Now let's jump right in. Before installing Kali Linux on VirtualBox, we need to enable virtualization on your system. To check if virtualization is enabled, right click on the taskbar and select task manager. Go to the performance tab. Click on CPU. Look for virtualization. If it says enabled, you are good to go. If virtualization is disabled, you need to enable it from the BIOS settings. Restart your PC and enter the BIOS by pressing F2, F10, Dell or Escape, depending on your manufacturer. Look for Intel VTX or AMD V and enable it. Save and exit the BIOS settings. Even if virtualization is enabled, Windows Hyper-V can interfere with VirtualBox. To disable it, open command prompt as administrator and run the following command. After that, restart your PC for the changes to take effect. Now that we have confirmed virtualization is enabled and Hyper-V is disabled, let's download and install VirtualBox. Open your browser and go to virtualbox.org. Click on Downloads. Select the current version for your operating system. Windows hosts if you are using Windows, Mac OS hosts for Mac users and Linux distribution for Linux users. I'll click on the Windows Hosts option and download will begin. Next, we need the VirtualBox extension pack. This is important for features like USB 3.0 support, webcam support, clipboard sharing and better performance overall. Click on Accept and Download to start downloading the extension pack. Now, let's install VirtualBox. Locate the VirtualBox setup file in your downloads folder. Double click to open it. You can leave the default settings as they are. Just click next. Click finish to complete the installation. Now let's install the extension pack to enable all the extra features. Click on tools menu. Then Extensions. Click the plus icon. Select the extension pack file from your downloads folder. Click Install. Scroll down, click I agree and wait for the installation to complete. And that's it. VirtualBox is fully set up and we are ready to move on to the next step that is downloading Kali Linux. Open your browser and go to kali.org slash getkali. On the Kali Linux download page, you'll notice two options, Installer Images and Pre-Build Virtual Machines. For this video, we are going to choose Installer Image. I know some of you might be thinking, why not just use the pre-built virtual machine since they are already configured for VirtualBox? Well, with the Installer Image, you get way more control over the installation. You can customize everything from the desktop environment like XFCE, Genome or KDE to the software tools you actually need. So unless you just need quick access, go to the installer image. Now click on the latest 64-bit ISO file to start downloading. Alright, now that we have the Kali Linux ISO downloaded, it's time to set up our virtual machine on VirtualBox. Let's do it step by step. First. Click on New to create a new virtual machine. In the Name field, type Kali Linux. Leave the machine folder as default. Set the type to Linux. Subtype will be Debian. And select Debian 64-bit as the version. Next, let's allocate memory. The minimum requirement is 2GB. 
but for better performance, it's recommended to allocate 4 GB or more depending on your system's available RAM. Just make sure not to allocate more than half of your total RAM as it could slow down your host system. Since I have 32 GB of RAM, I'll allocate 8 GB for Kali Linux. After setting the RAM, let's adjust the CPU allocation. It's best to assign at least 2 cores or up to half of your available cores for better performance. Since my system has 12 CPU cores, I'll allocate 6 cores to the virtual machine. Now, let's create a virtual hard disk for Kali Linux. The recommended storage for Kali Linux is 25 GB. But if you have enough space, go for 50 GB to ensure smooth experience. Once you have set the disk size, click finish to finalize the setup. At this stage, your VM is set up. But let's tweak a few settings for optimal performance. Click on settings to access your VM's configuration. Under the general tab, select advance. And change shared clipboard and drag and drop to bi-directional. This enables seamless text and file copying between your host and virtual machine. Moving to display. Maximize the video memory to 128 MB. In storage, under control ID, click on empty. Then click on CD icon on the right. Choose select a disk file. Then locate and select the Kali Linux ISO that you downloaded earlier. Finally, in the network settings, you can leave it as NAT for basic internet access or choose bridged adapter if you want Kali Linux to receive its own IP address from your router. With bridged adapter, Kali Linux becomes directly accessible from other devices on the same network. Once everything is set up, click OK to save the changes. Now that our Kali Linux virtual machine is set up and ready, it's time for the actual installation. Let's go through it step by step. Select your Kali Linux VM and click Start. After a few seconds, you will see the Kali Linux boot menu. Here, select Graphical Install and press Enter. Now, let's go through the initial setup. First, choose your preferred language for the installation. Next, select your country or region. Choose your keyboard layout. Kali Linux will now detect your network settings. When prompted, enter a host name. This is just the name of your machine. For the domain here, you can leave it as blank unless you are setting up Kali in a business network. Now let's create a user account. Enter the full name of the user. Next, enter a username. Set a strong password for your account. Make sure to remember this password as you will need it to log in and run commands. Now, we need to set up disk partitioning. If you are a beginner, the easiest option is to select Guided, Use Entire Disk. Then select the virtual hard disk we created earlier. On the next screen, choose All Files in One Partition. This is the simplest setup. Finally, select Finish Partitioning and write Changes to Disk. Then choose Yes to confirm the changes. Kali Linux will now start installing the base system. The process takes around 10 to 15 minutes depending on your system speed. Once the base system is installed, you will see a screen asking you to select additional software components. This includes choosing your desktop environment. By default, Kali uses XFCE which is lightweight and fast, making it ideal for older computers or virtual machines with limited RAM and CPU power. Genome offers more modern and polished interface but it requires more RAM. At least 4 GB is recommended for smooth performance. Another option is KDE, which provides an even more customizable and Windows-like experience with a variety of features and animations. However, it requires more resources than both XFCE and Genome. I'll go with the default XFCE. Next, you will see a prompt asking if you want to install the Jira bootloader. This is required to boot into Kali Linux properly. So select Yes and click Continue. Now select your virtual hard disk, then click Continue again. Kali will now install the bootloader. When you see the installation complete message, click Continue and your system will reboot. After restarting, you'll see the Kali Linux login screen. Enter the username and password you created earlier and hit enter. 
you should now see the Kali Linux desktop ready to use. Before proceeding, let's switch to full screen mode for better experience. To do this, press right control plus F. This will expand Kali Linux to fit your entire screen. If you ever want to exit the full screen mode, simply press right control plus F again. Now, Let's update Kali Linux to ensure we have the latest tools, security patches, and bug fixes. Open the terminal. Run the following command to update all system packages. After entering the command, Kali will check for available updates and start downloading them. Depending on your internet speed, this may take some time. Now, let's verify that Kali Linux is installed correctly. To check system details, run cat slash etcetera slash OS release. This will display the Kali Linux version you installed. As you can see, my Kali Linux version is 2025.1. If you want to see CPU and memory usage, run sudo app install htop. Then run htop. This opens a live system monitor where you can check CPU, RAM and running processes. Alright, now that Kali Linux is installed, let's make it even better by installing VirtualBox guest editions. This will enable additional functionalities like clipboard sharing, drag and drop support, etc. The good news is that Kali Linux already includes guest editions in its repository. Simply run this command to install it. Once the installation is complete, reboot Kali Linux to apply the changes. Alright, let's test if everything is working. First, I'll check the display scaling by opening the display settings. From here, I'll adjust the scale to 1.25. As you can see, it applies perfectly. Next, let's test keyboard sharing. I'll copy some text from my host system and paste it inside Kali's text editor. As you can see, it works. Now, I'll copy text from Kali and paste it back into my host system. And that works too. Finally, let's drag and drop. I'll grab a folder from my Windows host and drop it into Kali's desktop. The files are transferred instantly. This makes moving files between your systems super easy. You can also set up shared folders between your Windows host and Kali Linux. To do that, create a new folder on your Windows host that you want to share. For example, create a folder named Kali Share in your Documents folder. You can place any files you want to share within this folder. Now, in VirtualBox, select your Kali Linux virtual machine and click settings. Go to the shared folders tab. Click the plus sign on the right side. Click the folder path drop down and select other. Then navigate to the Kali share folder you created on your Windows host and select it. Leave the mount point blank. Check auto mount to ensure it loads automatically and make permanent to keep the shared folder available after reboots. Click OK to save the shared folder settings. Now, reboot your Kali VM. After reboot, the shared folder should be accessible directly in the file manager sidebar and you should see the files inside. And that's it. 
Kali Linux is now fully installed, optimized, and running smoothly inside VirtualBox.